Now we're ready to go. Affinity Designer and an introduction to text effects in Affinity on the iPad. Now this is a tutorial I came across on uh, the Frankentoon design site. But of course they did it a year or so ago in an earlier version of the desktop version. I wanted to do it in the iPad version. So I've shamelessly copied this and I've done it on the iPad mini, which I use for all my work. Very useful. We're going to put a text effect using a steel background. Today we're going to learn how, just by using a couple of designers' tools, we can come up with a very cool metal effect. In further tutorials, I'll add extra complexity and you can create more realistic results. You can do gold, silver, whatever colour you like. So, to start with, create a 10 by 7 inch document at 300 dpi. Press OK when you're ready. You'll see I've got that done as a preset, 10 by 7 preset, so I can come back to it any time I like. Just click on that and it's already done. Now, using the artistic text tool, type whatever you want. I chose the word steel in the outage font. Now, turn on your guides and center it. Outage font's freely available. It's, um, you'll find it all over the internet. Just look for that outage font and install it on your iPad. Before we start embellishing the text, it would be really cool to add some texture to the background. Get rid of that depressing white void background. So go to the tool menu. It's the little squares up there next to the left facing arrow. It looks like a miniature TV. And choose place image. To add a more interesting metal background, which you will have stored on your iPad, ready for your access. So now we have a starting image. Position it as you please. Preferably place that texture in a separate locked layer, so it won't get in our way during the rest of the tutorial. Of course, when you place it, it will go on top of your text. Move it down so it's on the bottom layer and lock it. Too easy. Now. Texture fill. This is an interesting little exercise. Might take you a few goes. While selecting the text you've just created, that is selecting that layer, select the gradient fill tool. Left hand side there looks like a little paint can on its side. Move to the context menu and choose bitmap as the fill type. Now watch this. This is a tricky one. A browser window will pop up. And it does when you're least expecting it. Look again for the brushed metal texture you've just downloaded. So the metal texture you've used in the background you're, you want to find again for your bitmap gradient tool. That's right. And you can see the gradient tool there. The, um, the little right angle dots there. You'll get something similar to the image above. And you can manipulate the position and dimensions of this texture by using the transformation handles. So if you move those around, you'll see the, you will see the texture of the letters move. You won't see the background move, but you'll see the texture move in the letters. Position that so you think it's just beautiful. Now there's uh, two layers. You can see the steel and the metal texture below it. To make sure this texture will tile as seamlessly as possible, select Mirror from the Pixel Persona context menu. So you just have to duck into Pixel Persona mode, that's up the top, second from the right side. You can see the little blue speckles like a bad TV screen. And down the bottom, you've got those that triangle, blue on one side, grey on the other, just tap that. That's, that's important for the process. You won't see much happen, but believe me, you need it. Now, keeping your text in that layer selected, and from the Layers panel, select the FX icon. Then the Layers Effects panel will appear, and you can see it there. You can see FX on the right-hand side. There is white, and the panel, the Layer FX panel, is displayed. From the menu, select Outer Shadow, and use the following set settings. Now you'll switch on Outer Shadow, but take it from me, sometimes, most times, you have to actually 
tap on the word outer shadow as well. If you just switch it on, sometimes it won't work. It seems to be random or arbitrary. So just click on outer shadow. You'll have no problem. Your blend mode is multiply. These are on the context toolbar down the bottom. Opacity is 100%. Radius is 65%. Offset, 25 pixels. Intensity, 20%. The color is black, mm, pretty black. And the angle, 270 degrees. Now, tick the scale with object option at the top of the panel. Right at the top there, just under layer FX, scale with object. This makes sure that your effects setting will scale proportionately as you resize your object. If you don't, and you resize your object, <laughs> all the effects stay behind, and that gets really messed up. Okay, next step. We're adding the 3D effects. So I've done the first bit, out of shadow, next bit, 3D. Let's add some lighting effects to create a 3D feel. Select the 3D option from the menu. Don't forget to tap on the 3D. And use these settings. The radius is fixed 15 pixels. Oh, I've got it there twice. Oh, there you go, every time. Okay, radius is fixed 15 pixels. The depth is 15 pixels. Soften, leave it at 0 pixels. And the opacity, 100%. Straightforward. Don't look for two radius options. There's only one. That's by mistake. So sorry. Now, modifying the profile curve, the arrow to the right of the context toolbar. We're still on the 3D, and you can see right at the right-hand side there, there's a huge red arrow pointing down to it. That little arrow hidden there. Tap on that, and it will take you to modifying the profile. Now, see that there where it says profile? If you tap on that, it brings up that profile window. Click on the profile graphic, and pull out the curve so it's similar to the one shown. And it's a fairly gentle curve around there. Each time you touch that white curve line, it will put a little reference point on there. Just be aware that you could end up with dozens of them if you move that line around too much. Okay, next step. Modify the options, which is further to the right of that... that... Um, curve that you just created down the bottom you can see those little left and right arrows modify the options as follows diffuse 40 percent specular 40 percent shininess 60 percent and the specular color is white that's on the right hand side right to the right of the word specular ambient is 80 percent and choose a medium grey for the ambient light colour. Medium grey is something like one of the greys on your background. You can even sample that if you like. But the colours I've got there are 80, 85 and 88 in your RGB hex sliders. And that'll give you that grey colour. It doesn't matter, it's not exact, but that's one way of doing it. Now then. Choosing the light sources, we're still using the little arrows to go to the right. We'll add two light sources to give certain drama to our text. On light source 1, type 89 degrees for the azimuth. A-Z-I-M-U-T-H, you can see it, third on the right in the context toolbar. 60% for elevation. And a pale blue on the colour input. Well, it says pale blue, but no, uh, I, I kind of left it the white that it is. If you want to change it, choose RGB sliders and use these settings for red, green, and blue. It's the RGB sliders, 236, 248, and 254. Now, next step. There we go. Now, add a second light source. And you can see you've got a plus sign there and for add or when you're on light source one, you can just duplicate light source one by pressing duplicate. And use these values. Azimuth minus 90%. 
Now, you may be cleverer than I am, and I hope you are, because I don't profess to cleverness at all, but I cannot get this iPad to put in minus 90 degrees for the azimuth. It just won't go. It did 0 to 360, so I left it at 360. If that's what it wants, that's what I gave it. But somewhere along the line, that's either a bug or a missed option. Elevation is 12. Let's carry right on. Elevation of 12 degrees and type these values for the RGB sliders. 0, 194 and 232. They're the colours. That's the colour there. That's that odd blue colour. And as we can't do minus 90 on the iPad, I'll just leave it at 360. We'll come back to that someday when they fix it. Now, let's add some cool chrome finish to the borders by creating an extra shadow or reflection effect using another effect from the layers panel. And you can see it over there. Activate the bevel slash emboss tool. Ah, oh, misspelling. T double O, it should be L. Tool. And use these values for the first four parameters. The type is inner, and you can see that there. And then you've got radius of 10 pixels, a depth of 100 pixels, and soften 0 pixels. And you can see the word steel is slowly taking shape and standing out from its background nicely. Go to the right with the little right arrow in the bottom context toolbar and get to the profile curve. And again, draw something similar to the graphic. Then modify the azimuth input to minus 20, which it won't do, and elevation 0. I have not, if there's a way of putting a minus number in there, I don't know what it is. Okay. Leave the highlights white in screen mode and 75% opacity. That's the last arrow to the right. Multiply mode at 70% and leave it black. They're the settings you put in before, so just showing you where they are. And you can see that there's only one bottom arrow left, and that's heading left of the screen in the, in the context toolbar down the bottom. But I'm really liking the look of our word steel. Now, see how easy it is? A couple of minutes before, we just had a dumb text over a white background. Now we have a shiny metallic text over a cool metal background. Just looks like my kitchen. Plenty of stainless steel. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. We'll discover more useful secrets next time and while we explore other layer effects features. Well, that's the plan. But don't forget, make it all gold even. Just for example, flowers, bricks, brick walls, people, fish. Instead of using stainless steel, you can use gold. And I started on there, but because we want to get this out, um, maybe I'll do the gold one next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it.